All right, as y'all can see, um, I became friends with Ashley Jones on October 8th, 2022 at 7.35 p.m. All right, so I became friends with her on October 8th. Um, then on October 11th, I tried to holler at 7.06 a.m. First thing in the morning, hi, no response, totally ignored. Ashley was not interested, I guess. Maybe she was busy. I don't know what was going on. So if y'all look, I waited all the way till October 28th to try to holler at her again. This time I did it at nighttime. Hey. Hey. Wow. So at 10 p.m., she was... She was up. She was ready to chat. Okay. So I was like, all right. I said, Divine Masculine here. I heard you called me. <laughs> I see you a natural beauty. You know, I was checking out her pictures and seeing that she had a natural beauty. And that's just one thing I love to see about her that she wasn't really so much into wearing a whole lot of makeup or covering up her natural beauty. You know, now, if you also look at the top, says that she works at Know Thy Goddess. So she was really about her business. And it said that she lives in Scottsdale, Arizona. So I'm not going to lie. I was really interested in that as well because I do crystal jewelry and I was looking forward to expanding my business into Arizona. So I not only was attracted to her beauty, but I was also attracted to the fact that it says that she lived in Arizona because that's kind of where I was headed, right? For uh, the Crystal Conference in February. Because as you can see, this is in October. So I'm gearing up already. I'm thinking about February months in advance. All right. So I said, I see you a natural beauty. She said, yes. How are you? I was like, okay. I'm getting some type of feedback. She, she talking to me now. She not ignoring me no more. Okay, now we really got a conversation going. So I'm like, great. Shoot, I'm feeling good at that point. The fact that she even was like responding and saying, yes, how are you? Then I said, you keep showing up in my feed. I guess they matched us up. <laughs> when I'm saying they, I'm really kind of referring to like our ancestors. I'm referring to... um. You know, the energies that work behind the scenes. Because nothing happens by coincidence, right? We got our angels working for us. We got a lot going on that we don't see. So that's what I mean by they. Then I'm like, do you do tarot? Right? I'm asking her about tarot. She's like, yes, I do. That right there was very important to me because... You know, when you're getting to know someone and you're seeking to get to know them more intimately, you want to be on the same page as that person. You don't want to have different thoughts about spirituality and how you view things such as tarot and how you view astrology or spirituality. You kind of want to be on the same page with that person. So to me, that was like a great sign, right? From the jump. Plus, I was already into doing tarot. I had my own tarot deck. I had my own oracle deck. So I said, I can have, I have, I have an um, Oracle deck and a Tarot deck. I need to use them more. Are you fluent with your deck? She's like, cool. How long have you been doing it? 2019 I started, she said. So I'm like, okay. So she definitely is a veteran, 2019. We were just chatting here in 2022. So that was three years ago. All right. How'd you learn or did you always have the gift to read? Now, if you notice here, I'm not like just so focused on a physical in this conversation. I am talking more about her mental side and her spiritual side. Because me as a Sagittarius, that's one thing that is intriguing to me when a woman can have a intellectual conversation. It just ain't all about the flesh, but. It's a person that knows how to go deeper and to um, the hidden knowledge 
as far as um, occult knowledge and spirituality, like to me, that's a truly uh, something that very inter that interests me in a person. So I, from the jump, I'm like already into her. She's beautiful. She's into uh, hidden knowledge and occult knowledge. So this is really, she got my attention, all right? So, so she said, I just picked up a deck and it came naturally. So the way she said she learned is basically it was intuitive. It's nothing that she had to go to school for. And I was like, wow, that's really powerful because I never really heard anybody say that before. And it just gave me a whole new perspective on, you know, exercising our spiritual gifts and how a lot of times these gifts are innate. We are born with it. It's not something that somebody could just like you go to school for. It's kind of like it's already ingrained in your blood and your DNA. So I said, I plan to attend a gym show in Arizona the end of January. She liked it. She's like, cool, okay. I said, have you ever been to them? I heard 65,000 people attend. She she sounded like she more interested in me. Look up. She's like, where are you from? Like, I understand we want to talk about a show, but where are you from? I'm like, oh, okay. But I was still, <laughs> I guess I was chatting while she was texting. I was still texting too. I said, if I set up a table to, if you set up a table to do readings, you get a few months pay in the day. I see, I see that as a strong possibility. The cosmos. I'm from New York, living in North Carolina now. So she liked the fact that I said, if you set up a table to do readings, you can get a few months pay in a day, in a few days. She said, I know this. I'm like, okay. So we already on the same page as far as my plans to link up with her possibly in Arizona. Because at this point, I'm still thinking she's in Arizona, mind y'all. As I'm talking to her, I'm like, wow. So I'm chatting with the sister in Arizona. And she's interested in what I'm talking about. I said I sell crystal jewelry. Uh, people always asking me to do readings. She's like, she liked the fact, okay, she clicked that I sell crystal jewelry. She likes that. She's like, well, I want some. <laughs> so right there, she's already like being playful. That's a really good sign to me because she's engaged in our conversation and she's into, she's being entertained by it and she's having fun with it, right? So I'm like, I'm considering to offer it, um... Oh, I said, yeah, people always asking me to do readings, so I'm considering to offer it. Then I said, you know what, let me just uh, play an audio. Let me send her an audio message, so listen to this audio. Okay, Missy, what type of jewelry do you like? I make rings, necklaces, bracelets, uh, you name it, crystal crowns. Use your imagination. <laughs> All right, so I'm offering her some jewelry. Um... Called the Missy, and I got showed a picture of some hair clips. I said, "Here go my organite hair clips that I just started making." I got the moon shape one, the triangular one, the oval shape. They go on your locks and your braids. Then I'm showing her samples of my customers who've been buying them. So I said, "These are my new hot sellers, designed by yours truly." If you like to do a video chat. I can show you my whole inventory. So as y'all can see, I'm really trying to get her on video at this point. And she's like, no, thanks. I like, whoa. Okay, so she's already kind of being like playing hard to get. So, uh, but I understand maybe she just wasn't just decent. She's laying in bed. She doesn't want to be on camera. I'm like, well, look, you don't have to be on camera. I'm just offering she said, oh, but I'm more interested in you. I'm like, what? So I click her heart on that. Because she's like, look, I understand you do your crystal jewelry and all, but I'm really trying to get to know you first. I'm like, whoa, okay. She was not playing no games. 
I'm like, hmm, okay. She said, as she says, very talented man. How old are you? Um, I said, guess. Thanks, sweetie. I see we have a similar interest. Gardening, nature, astrology. What's your sign? So Facebook allows you to see people's hobbies. And on her list, I noticed she said she likes gardening and nature and astrology. So right away, I saw a connection right there and how we have similar interests. And then I'm like trying to get her sign now. She's still with my age. Like, okay, you look like you in your 50s. She said, yes, Pisces, your sign. I said, Sag, I'm 52. She's like, oh, you are Sag? <laughs> I knew you were a fire sign. I don't know how she knew that, but she knew it. I guess because she's psychic. I said, yes, you get along with Sag? She said, as friends, I do. <laughs> I was like, good answer. <laughs> Family feud, like the Steve Harvey voice. <laughs> uh, but in a bedroom, it's magical. I'm like, oh, okay. All right, she already know. All right, so she kind of got an insight onto how I get down in a bedroom. I'm like, wow. That's interesting. I'm like, oh, yeah. Love magic is what's up. She's like, yes, indeed. So she already is on to love magic. She's familiar with it. So I was like, all right, that was very interesting and important for me because it's not like something I have to convince her of if we ever get to that point in our relationship. All right. So anything can be manifested with love magic. She's like, yes. So she's like totally on board and she's ready to do possible love magic in the future. So I'm like, wow. All right. That's dope. When two minds are able to visualize their goals, the Yoni creates not just babies, but empires. So I'm talking to her about us potentially creating an empire by doing having sex, right? And that. This sex will not just be able to create babies, but it's also able to create a business, an empire for us, right? So that is something that I was making it clear to her that I'm about. And it says, especially the melanated yoni, that is key. Because by the way, y'all, um, me, I'm only interested in melanated sisters. I'm not attracted to anyone else on the planet. I feel once you go black, you don't go back. All right, and Ebony, Melanated Goddess, how you want to describe them, the indigenous original goddesses of our planet are the most beautiful beings on Earth. I might want to say in the universe, but I haven't been around the total universe. But at this point, as far as I've seen in the universe, right? So she's like, oh, she likes the fact that I said you only creates not just babies, but empires. She's like, yes, I know. I'm like, you know what? This woman is very advanced. She's not, um, she's not ignorant, you know. And that's one thing that always has been a turn off for me whenever I meet someone, and it's like they don't have no clue about themselves, who they are, what they're capable of. The fact that you know she has a yoni and she's able to create and manifest with it, she's already aware of this. So I'm like, wow. I don't have to take her to school. She's already been to school. So that's awesome. She's done her homework. She's studied. She's done her research. She is woke. She is more. She's a conscious and aware of who she is. So this is getting, I'm getting more and more interested in her because I'm noticing that we are all, we are on the same page when it comes to the way we think. And the fact that I've been looking for a goddess and looking to manifest my goddess, I'm like, at this point, I'm feeling beginning to feel like, wow, she could really be the one. I'm like, I'm enjoying your vibes already. Wow. FB, you know, Facebook is making me have faith in the algorithms. <laughs> so I'm kind of feeling like, wow, how is it that she showed up in my feed? Did Facebook, like, know that I was looking for this type of woman? And it just kind of, like, showed me her. Um... You know, because it's just at this point, it's beginning to look like 
there's a lot going on behind the scenes that have caused me to meet someone like this because I have talked with various women, of course, throughout my lifetime who were not able to have an intellectual, uh, interesting conversation like this, you know? Um, so she's like, yeah, she's enjoying the fact that I said I'm enjoying your vibe. She's like, likewise. So she's enjoying my vibes and she's laughing because I said Facebook is like connecting us. She, I say, you have a beautiful, beautiful complexion. All right, so I'm getting flirtatious here, yeah, a little flirtatious. She's like, thanks, love. You saw me on your feet, huh? I said, and I love your lips too, right? Because you got them juicy lips. Oh, my Lord, so sexy. And I'm like, look, I'm trying to remember how I first connected with you because like this point, I'm very shocked that I'm even having this type of conversation so i'm like where did this even begin so now i'm trying to backtrack i'm like well what caused us to connect from the beginning this is really shocking to me i said you keep popping up in my feed and i had to holler so i do recall seeing her picture often somehow then she says i love older men for some reason i'm like whoa okay that's good to know all right um, because, you know, I am older than her. And, um, so she at this point is 35 and I definitely want to connect with a younger woman because they can have some babies for me. Right. So that was very important to me that she's even interested in me as an older man. I said, it feel I feel it's more about the convo a man has with you. So I'm like telling her, well, it's not just because I'm an older person. I think it's my conversation that's really got you intrigued. I said, we connected on levels beyond age because we are infinite beings. She's like, all the men I dated were older. I'm like, oh, okay, all the men. And then she's like, oh, yeah, true. We connecting on levels beyond age. So she's like, true. I was like, how old are you, Miss Beautiful One? <laughs> Gave her a little nickname, Miss Beautiful One. Now she want me to guess. I'm like, look, old enough to be my honey delicious brown sugar. <laughs> All right. So at this point, I'm really going in and uh, kind of already kind of claiming her somehow at this point. So things are really speeding up. And she's like, oh, guess. I feel you or I feel you already know. I said, Well, you look young. Are you 29? She's like, no. Alright, because she really does look young. I said, Well, look, how old are you? She said, 35. I said, perfect. Okay, perfect. I'm so honored to have met you, my dear queen. Now look, I already declared her as my queen. At this point, I'm her king. <laughs> I said, look, I really want to put a crown on you. Do you currently reside in New York? Well, she's trying to find out where I'm at. Am I in New York? She's trying to find out. Then I'm showing her this crown that I made. Nah, I'll go back there, but not for now. I'm in New York City. I mean, North Carolina. Then I'll play this audio. And let's see what I said in the audio. Can you talk on the phone? Um, it's just that I have some questions I want to ask you. It's concerning um, reading type stuff like that. But, yeah, because uh, this text message thing is typed slow. <laughs> Look, man, I'm really trying to speed things up. Y'all hear me? Look, I'm trying to get her on the phone. She's like, no, not at the moment. Maybe in an hour. I'm like, oh, okay. And then I'm trying to find out where is she at. All right. And the reason I was asking her, I wanted to get on the phone too, is because I know she does tire and I kind of wanted to get a reading just because at the moment I was considering to go back to New York because it's funny how she asked me, am I in New York? So when she did that, she kind of triggered something in me, which caused me to like want to really dive deeper, get more um, of a spiritual reading from her point you know, of view. As far as how she see me moving, maneuvering in regards to, you know, which state I'm going to next. Because at this point, I was really considering to be leaving North Carolina 
being out on my sag, I'm always all over the place. Like New York, I lived in New York. I lived in California. I lived in North Carolina. I lived in Atlanta, Georgia. I lived in Hawaii, Honolulu, Waikiki. I lived in London, England. And I even lived in a bit in Jamaica, West Indies. So I'm used to moving around a lot. So I kind of know that it's about that time I'm about to move. And I just didn't know where. So that's why I really wanted to get her on the phone to kind of get a read in on it. So I'm even like considering to go to Arizona at this point. You know, so I'm asking her, are you in Arizona? There's a gym show in, in Tucson. She's like, no. I'm like, okay, well, are you in New York? She's like, no. <laughs> I'm like, well, okay, are you in Cali? She's like, no. Look, I'm really trying to find out where she at. Look, are <laughs> wow, okay, are you on Planet Kai? She's like, maybe. <laughs> then she's like, I'm in Tennessee. So, I said, I hear country music. <laughs> Cause that's what I think of when I heard Tennessee. Is it Nashville? You you like it there? She's like, no, not in Nashville, but I want to move back to Arizona. So, oh, okay. I'm asking her, do she sing? Because, you know, I, I produce music, y'all. So, I'm looking to see if she could get on a track of song with me. She's like, no, she don't sing. I said, do you rap? She's like, uh, no. I'm like, well, do you produce music? She's like, no. Now, I feel a music vibe from her. And this is interesting because she is a Pisces. And she does have a gift. Because Pisces are known for their musical genius. For those who do engage in the music, but for those who don't, they may not be aware of it. So I think at this point, she is one who is not aware of it. She has not tapped into her music side of herself for whatever reason. But I really, at this point, am looking to help her do that. So I'm like, look, do you, I said, I produce music. Oh, that was a typo. I'll be searching for, I'll be searching for talent, right? Because I'm considering her as someone to be doing music with me. And I said, I performed at this event tonight. She's like, what did you do? I said, I performed my songs. Oh, you sing? I said, yes, I rap and sing. Then I'm sending her my music video, We The Truth, right? Showing her the song that I performed at the event in North Carolina, all right? Then she's like, I love it. You wrote it? I said, thanks, yes. It's on Apple Music. She's like, cool. I said, my music is my love she's like nice i said what's your love she said my peace Woo. <laughs> like that was a very profound statement because it's like without peace what do you really have right and i'm like look that's a point then she oh i get to hear her voice so here we go y'all i'm gonna play this audio she gives me an audio so what is it about my readings that you want to know Oh, my Lord. Did y'all hear that sexy voice? Oh, my Lord. Listen to that again. So, what is it about my readings that you want to know? Woo! So, now, for y'all who do not understand who I am, I am a Sagittarius who is very much into being attracted to a sexy woman's voice. There are times when I've met beautiful women, and then when I hear them talk, I'll be totally turned off. Like, it doesn't matter how they look, but if they sound like a man when they talk, like, like, I'm done. I'm moving on. I'm going on to the next. <laughs> and I'm not interested. But that voice right there whew, really got my attention. Well, I don't really be looking for readings like that, but we kind of connected. So I was kind of going to ask you if you was sensing any type of reading on me. If you pull a card or something, I don't know. This kind of was a sight. Seeing if, because when you were asking about states and stuff like that, it kind of sparked it in my head. Like, you was asking me if I was in New York. So, yeah. She's like, oh, okay. Are you curious about something in particular? So, she sounds like she wants to help, which is good. She's asking me. Well, yes. It's concerning my next move. 
like right now I'm in North Carolina, so I'm just kind of like, just like, wow, spirit, where are you going to have me go next? That type deal. Yeah, y'all, I'm that sad, you know, four legs, horse, half man, half amazing. So I'm ready to make a move. Well, that should be obvious, my love, <laughs> Tennessee. So she's already joking around about me coming to Tennessee to be with her. Ain't that something? Well, look, this is what happens when you're dealing with a psychic woman, y'all. All right? They kind of see the future. All right, here we go. I like, huh? I love your humor, right? Because I'm like, you can't be serious. You must be joking. That's why I say your humor. Uh, me and you vibe. I love your voice, right? So I had to let her know that she sounds sexy, all right? So definitely got my attention there, with my ear, all right? If you if you was with me, I have you on a mic talking sexy over my beats. <laughs> yeah, because that's the type of voice she got. She's like, I bet you would. Then I'm like, is there a gym show in Tennessee? Because look, y'all, I'm already making plans to try to come to Tennessee. But I want to make it more than just uh, bu uh, a pleasure trip. I want to make it business and pleasure all in one, right? So I'm asking if there's a gym show. Everyone tells me my voice is sexy and I should be a call girl. <laughs> not sure. She's not sure if there's a gym show in Tennessee. I said that would be a good reason to visit, right? Besides, I, besides the fact I could meet you, right? So I'm already talking about going there to meet her in Tennessee. I said, look, or you can visit North Carolina. So I'm inviting her to come to North Carolina. I said, come give me a live reading. <laughs> Let's see what type of energy you pick up on me. I do photography. I see you're very photogenic. All right. I'm noticing she looks like a model. So I'm already ready to take pictures of her. I said, it'd be dope to do a photo shoot with you by the river. All right. So I'm showing her um the river that i'm talking about this is the river i sit by to meditate and work my magic so i'm planning a photo shoot with her by the river then i'm like where you been my whole lifetime <laughs> whoa i'm like wow okay i said looking for you i guess we've been distracted she said you are sagittarius though uh so, yo, how'd she go from where you been on my life to, oh, you a Sagittarius? Like, she thinking twice, like, oh, no, I don't think I'm ready as a Pisces to be dealing with a Sagittarius. <laughs> oh, man. I was like, look, was you getting my telepathic messages? Now, this right here, that whole line, y'all, that is a whole conversation in of itself because I literally have been talking to her with before this conversation it sounds crazy y'all but that's the kind of magical things i do when i get inside my meditation pyramid i would talk to her because i felt like my true love spirit can hear me regardless of how far away she is the distance and etc right so i'm asking her was she picking up on the messages then i'm like look call me because i really want to hear her voice at this point and talk to her on the phone I said, I need to hear your voice. It's more organic. You know, I'm trying to get away from this texting, you know, these DMs. This kind of feels like it's slowing down the conversation. I'm a Sagittarius. I like to make moves when I'm feeling something and I'm onto something I think is great. I ain't trying to play no games. I'm not trying to have no barriers. I'm trying to get this text messaging thing out the way and get on the phone so that we could move forward and progressing into where we going with this whole relationship right so i'm like look here's my number call me and she's like i'm not gonna call you i'm like you know what she is really playing hard to get what is up with this woman we got a great conversation going on here and she won't get on the phone so look at this point i'm very frustrated all right but i'm trying to be nice about it so i'm like laughing ha <laughs> ha should I call you? Look, I'm not giving up. <laughs> She's like, no. I'm like, wow, okay, okay. I'm laughing. 
She said, look, you heard my voice. Like, she trying to say that's good enough. You don't need to get on the phone. You heard me. I'm like, wow, okay. Putting me in my place. No problem. Wiggle, shake it to shake it, do your thing. Let me see your booty swing. She's like, huh? So right there, <laughs> I'm kicking a freestyle, a freaky lyric that I'm just writing in my head as I'm speaking to her. I'm just thinking about a song that I'm writing about a woman shaking her booty and you know how I like to see it swing. And she's like, huh? Because it kind of just came out of left field. She don't understand where that's coming from. But what was happening is I was listening to a beat while I was on the phone with her. So I've got instrumentals playing in the background that she got, she's not aware of. So I'm kind of just rapping to that. And then I give her insight onto what's really going on in my world. So I play audio for y'all to hear. Yeah. I, I don't know, this lyric just came to me when I was hearing this beat. I was like, okay, well, all right. So I was just like, wiggle, shake it, do your thing. Let that be it, booty swing. Wiggle, shake it, do your thing. Let me see that booty swing. Wiggle, shake it, do your thing. Let me see that booty swing. Swing, swing, swing. <laughs> all right, so let me play it again because I'm just getting in the swing of it. Mind you, this is a new song I'm writing. Right, so now I'm really getting into the writing mode for whatever reason. She got me excited about that. I said, okay, I'm getting into writing mode. This is how I catch the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you know, so basically I'm just telling her that I got this writing vibe on me because I am a writer and it happens occasionally. And it feels like catching the Holy Ghost. You know how people talk about catching the spirit. You know, the spirit, I felt, is rising up in me. So um, I was getting excited, and I was ready to write a song. I said, I think you will help me catch the Holy Ghost, too. But you you, you tired now, I think. <laughs> she said, I'm picking up on your energy. It's very familiar to me. What is your birthday? Now, when she said it's very familiar to me, I think what she's referring to is that she feels she has met me in a past life. All right. Um, so at this point, um, we kind of, you know, got that kind of vibe connection. I'm like, November 25th. She's like, oh, yeah. Why are you single? Then I'm like, long story. She's like, figured. I said her energy couldn't come to this next phase. I'm referring to my previous relationship, right? Baby mama. So I said, lots of people have been torn apart because the two operate on different frequencies. Everything vibrates, our thoughts, bodies, etc. right? So me being a creator who creates organite, uh, pyramids and high energy pieces, healing uh, amulets, etc. Um, constantly vibrating, vibrating on high frequency. So what happened is that certain people who are not to be in my life kind of was getting turned off by me because they could not really get with being on that high frequency. They, for whatever reason, wanted to stay low vibrational and to stay in the low part of themselves. And that is something that I could not continue to be around and universe didn't want me around so universe pretty much like separated us um uh, which is a whole long story in and of itself how it all happened it was kind of like out of my control and you know one day she just kind of got up my baby mom's that is while i was at work she got up packed the things and my baby's things and left the house so that's just how it happened right so that's how that whole Break up occurred with my previous uh, woman, and that's how I ended up single, right? Baby moms ran off with my son, Makai. True story, y'all. Literally. Son who I was raising from day one, literally birth, literally delivered him at home, right? We didn't go to the hospital. I delivered my son straight out her womb at home, and... She just decided she was going to jump up and leave with him. And so that's how that happened. I ended up by myself. 
She said, yes, my love, same here. So she dealt with a similar situation. She's not explaining fully why, but, or what it was, but the fact that she, whoever she was with, was not able to continue to keep up with her high vibration and the level of where she was going to. And she kind of outgrew the relationship. And that's kind of what happens to a lot of us, right? Many of y'all might find yourselves in a situation where you're with someone who, when you first got with them, you kind of was on the same vibration frequency. But then as time moved on, you kind of grew outgrew them. And this happens a lot of times every day in this world, right? People outgrow each other. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. All right. Some people in your life for a season. Some people in your life for a lifetime. It all depends, right? Who they are and what they're doing with their life. All right. So I said, my space is sacred. And she said, the reason I'm single, right? She said, she's single as well. All right. So that was good to hear. All right. Um, I can I only can tolerate high vibes. Low level energies cannot coexist with me. Right. Because when you're vibrating high, people with low vibrations do not feel comfortable around you. Right. They can't stand your presence. They can't stand to be around you. They are afraid of you for whatever reason. They don't know. They end up being scared of you. They end up fearing you. They end up just being confused about you. And because they're confused about you, they end up being scared of you and they just don't understand how you think the way you think. So they kind of end up being turned off by you. So whether it is someone who you're in relationship with, family member, a friend, it doesn't matter. All these people will begin to repel. All right. Once repel, once they, they, they get repelled from you because your energy is beginning to like just literally make them feel so uncomfortable. They, they, they are repelled by your presence. They, they feel the need to just run off. They feel the need to just move out. They feel the need to just stop communicating, stop calling you, stop texting you, stop speaking to you, stop coming around you, right? This is what happens, and this is what happened to me, and it sounds like it's what happened to her as well. So she's saying, my peace comes far above all. And I definitely could relate, right? I say, yep, because it's from this perspective space i create right yes 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 i feel you completed this today right so this is the first time that i created this new design which is a six-pointed star inside of a hexagon hexagon copper wire hexagon that is with an organite um circular uh shaped piece right that is protruding out of the middle Right, so this is a uh, original piece, and I have it here sitting on top of my drum, my djembe. All right, and it's a small djembe, and it has a leather uh, rope uh, necklace on it. All right, so I'm saying my goal is to leave a legacy, and she said I'm leaving an empire. I said I have many intellectual properties and designs I release into the public domain. I'm time stamped as being the originator all right i'm looking for a partner to build with for many of the generations behind me to enjoy and to keep up right so she says she wants to leave an empire for the generations behind her to enjoy and keep and upkeep right and i'm talking about how my goal is to build a tribe of a hundred called royal light tribe and we all vibrate at high frequency and manifest through collective consciousness through the hundredth monkey effect we impact the entire world so what i'm talking about here is how i want to bring together a hundred people but that is 50 couples really male and female couples right who will you know straight couples who will actually be thinking the same thoughts high vibrational all a part of the same chart called royal light where we will do uh meditation practices where we will think about things that we want to manifest and we will use the hundredth monkey effect which by the way y'all is when these monkeys started cleaning their um sweet potato in the water one monkey at a time y'all one monkey at a time it started with this one monkey and then when it got up to a hundred monkeys you know learning from one another how to clean their sweet potato before they eat it 
they would clean it in a river all of a sudden all of the monkeys around the world all right began to clean their sweet potatoes so this is called the hundredth monkey effect now this is what i actually am looking at this point to manifest but not just about sweet potatoes but more about uh us manifesting powerful healing uh things for our community whether it be schools whether it be spiritual centers where people come they could be healed they could be you know receive a detox whether it be through herbs whether it be through spiritual baths sound healing um crystal healing uh reiki uh tarot astrology readings you name it all right these are the things that i'm looking to manifest so when i talk about putting together this hundred people for this royal light tribe these are the practices that i'm really referring to right 50 women 50 men all couples straight couples all right because it's really about us as a tribe you know um continuing to have children right so that we can expand all right so that's why i definitely want them to be straight you know people choose not to be straight hey that's on them i love them anyway you know that's their choice all right but the type of tribe that i'm looking to build is a tribe that can grow all right in numbers in leaps and bounds so if we got a hundred people or 50 couples and each of these 50 couples have uh say you know um five babies you know each then what i've done is my tribe has gone from 50 people to 250 people if they have 10 fit babies each then my tribe are going from 50 people to 500 people all right and strength is in numbers as y'all know with numbers we have more leverage we have more ability to uh do powerful things and and to move move mountains all right once we have families that are um tightly knit that are working in together in unison and building as a community with the larger community and then she's like, well, can we be a couple? I'm like, whoo-wee. I'm like, yeah, of course. If spirit is leading us that way. She's like, ha ha, I'm just messing. I love your vibes, though. So she acts on one hand, she want to be a couple. But then on the next hand, she kind of pulling back a bit. Because obviously we have not really met face to face at this point. We haven't even got on the phone and had a conversation, let alone jump into that area right so she gave me a nice beautiful kiss ain't that sweet i'm like where is the world did this woman come from this beautiful woman is kissing at me what with them juicy lips now look at that kiss don't it look juicy it's through collective consciousness the third eye is manifested expeditiously right so I'm still talking about the monkey, have a hundredth monkey effect. I said, I'm picking up on your energy. I love the playfulness. That's key in my book. She said, yes, I love to just be free and have fun. I was like, yeah, laughter is medicine to the soul. She's like, yes, it is. You should let me model your jewelry. Whoa. Now, how did she know I was looking for a model, y'all? This is getting better and better. I'm like, what? So I'm getting two for the price of what? What? Not only can I get to know you and be in a relationship with you, but you're going to be my model as well? Wow. This got to be the universe working in my favor. This got to be my ancestors doing a thing. At this point, I'm like, yo, all of my manifesting true love activities that I was doing with the sigils, with the love magic manifesting as far as um um getting in my pyramid and manifesting true love and putting rose quartz crystals in water to manifest love that's what i refer to when i say love magic and using my crystal grid my love grids right by putting rose quartz crystals on my crystal grids with the quartz to manifest true love i'm like at this point i'm like whoa i guess this might just be her okay she said 
wear it in my video so she's already planning to wear my jewelry in her videos because she is a content creator so i'm like of course and then i'm showing her my etsy shop um which is not in existence anymore but this is my shop i showed it to her and um she said i said look give me a reading and i'll ship you a package so i'm already trying to make a uh, deal with her you know barter in exchange i said we could barter how that sound you don't have to read me now and she's like cool so she agreed to it so i'm agreeing to ship her out some products that she could wear in her videos right because she makes videos for tiktok instagram all of that facebook right and i said i know it's late up to you but let me know in the mornings evenings are best for me because i work midday to evening as he shut down my old shop because they said i was promoting drugs when i was just selling roach clips not drugs wow most of the sales are when I do pop-up shops at various locations from New York to Cali to North Carolina. These are major states I've been doing my business in. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, y'all, so I've been selling my jewelry all throughout America from the East Coast to the West Coast. Started in New York, selling on 125th Street in Harlem. Then I went, excuse me, Union Square Park, right? Downtown Manhattan. Sold on Jamaica Avenue in Queens, Jamaica, Queens, New York, right? Then I uh, sold at various events all, events all throughout New York at Rafa Center, as well as various other events uh, where I would perform my music and um, showcase my merchandise at the events, right? In Brooklyn, uh, all over New York City, right? So... Um, then from there, I went to California where I was selling on Ontario, right there on Mountain and Mission in the shopping center. Then I was selling in Venice Beach and I sold on Newport Beach, sold on Santa Monica Beach, and I settled down in Long Beach, which I love Long Beach. Shout out to all my people in Long Beach. Yeah, right by the bluff, yoga on a bluff, right by the aquarium. All right, in California, I was selling my jewelry all throughout Long Beach, California. And I really had a lot of great connections there with the people who were doing yoga. I was set up doing yoga class, yoga on a bluff, and linked up with so many wonderful people who were purchasing my crystal jewelry and etc. Right? So... All right, um, then I went from California over to North Carolina, where I was selling in flea markets. I sold at Raleigh flea market. I sold at Rocky Mount flea markets. I sold in all throughout North Carolina. All right, and so that's pretty much at that point what my business was doing. She's like, oh, okay. So recently I considered to move into Arizona, which is true. All right, at this point, I'm like, look, Arizona is the mecca when it comes to crystals. And everybody knows this who's into crystals, right? So I'm like, look, I'm looking to move to Arizona, right? And I'm like, look, due to the influx of the business worldwide there, you know, right? Because they have like 75,000 people that come to Arizona every year, y'all. Y'all hear that number? 75,000 attending one conference. One conference. In Arizona, people come from all over the world. So I'm like, look, I need to be around that, right? So, plus I had a friend who had told me she had a dream that I was selling in Arizona. So I'm like, look, I'm really trying to get over there. So I'm like, they have the highest sales for crystal shoppers, which is true. They sell within the billions of dollars, y'all. Do you hear that number? Billions of crystal jewelry Crystal transactions are made during the conference in Arizona. I did not say millions. I said billions. Okay. Let that sink in. All right. So she's like, yes, I love it there. And she kind of, she's aware of that as well. So what city do you like? I said, I want to go the end of July. I mean, January. 
she said she said she likes all the cities in Arizona. I'm like, okay. I said, well, Tucson is where the conference is. Tucson is where the big crystal crystal conference is. January 28th to February 7th is a gym show in Tucson, Arizona. People from all over the world go to that show. She said they want 3,700 for a booth to vendor. See, I already did my research. I called them up. I'm like, look. How much for me to vendor? They told me thirty-seven hundred. Do y'all hear that number? Three thousand seven hundred dollars. Why is it they charging three thousand seven hundred dollars? Cause they know I can make ten thousand seven hundred dollars. That's why. Okay. All right. Ten thousand dollars, and I'm one vendor. Do the math. There's about a hundred vendors there, and these are all people that are coming in every year. So you got people coming to the gym show. Setting up a booth, making fifty thousand dollars, y'all. But that's a whole nother story. All right, so I'm look, I'm trying to be a part of that crew. So I said, look, I have a better idea. I plan to find a local business that will let me do a pop up shop in front of their business in a high traffic area. So at that point, I'm like, you know, even if I don't get to vendor by paying three thousand dollars. Maybe I could just set up in front of a store that's right down the block from the crystal show, right? Because obviously people will be driving by, by the thousands and hundreds of thousands, right? Or hundreds. So I'm like, look, either way, I'm going to get some business going in Arizona. So I said, once I find a local business that will enter agreement with me, I plan to book a flight. She's like, nice. If you know any potential spots, let me know. All right. She said, I will. I'm going to pause right there, y'all. So come back for part two. This is part one. I'm going to see if I could get Ashley to get in on the next one with, you know, sharing with y'all about this whole DMing messaging that we were doing here. You know, I love to get her voice on here with me. All right. So y'all leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about this whole thing. And how it is that you see how we started out our relationship, how we got started, how we started chatting, and just all of the different um, topics we were addressing in this conversation. So thanks for listening, y'all. Craig the Creator, signing out. Peace. Namaste. The God in me, honest the God, and God is in you.